What if one day you went online and saw a video of you that you know you were never in? What if this video of you looked crystal clear and showed you speaking words you never said? Big what ifs, right? Like some invasion of the body snatchers type stuff? <coughs> but unfortunately, this isn't science fiction. These are deep fakes. Essentially, AI can digest thousands of images of a person and paste it onto the face of another in video form. This new face moves almost as seamlessly as the original one, which is both impressive and terrifying. Experts think that deepfakes can lead to an age of disinformation. After all, if you can fake anybody, that means politicians and other people in power. Whole wars could be started over videos that aren't even real. Whoever controls the data controls the future. So with this looming disinformation crisis, what can we do to avoid being tricked by deepfakes? And what is a deepfake? The name deep fake comes from a combination of deep learning and because the video themselves are fake. Very original name. But what the hell is deep learning? Basically, deep learning is a computer's way of learning and compositing information in the same way that the neural networks of human brains work. Scientists teach the system by feeding it information that isn't just numbers and raw data, but also stuff like videos, music, and pictures. A perfect example of a product of deep learning is the 2016 short film Sunspring, a sci-fi tale written by an actual real-life AI named Benjamin. Director Oscar Sharp and AI researcher Ross Goodwin fed Benjamin a bunch of sci-fi screenplays from the last 30 years, which use algorithms to analyze the way words were used and what phrases normally proceed or follow each other. Benjamin used all of the ingredients of these sci-fi screenplays to write its own, Sunspring. It's not a dream, but I've got a time to stay there. Well, I still think you could be back on the table. It'd be like if you ate a bunch of different soups and then figured out what ingredients they all shared based on the flavors and smells of each. Then, thanks to all the soups you've sampled and eaten, you created your own soup based on that information alone. Ew. Ew. Now imagine, instead of feeding an AI screenplays, you fed it thousands of photos of a person. This is the principle that deepfakes is built on. Deepfakes use deep learning as well, using a special kind of network called a GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network. It's a mouthful. This network uses algorithms to consume huge sets of data in order to create new data. It was created by grad student Ian Goodfellow in 2014 and could be used to create an entirely new photo of a person after viewing thousands of their existing photos. Truly a remarkable use of technology. But just as Icarus flew close to the sun on wings held together with wax, unknowing the ignorance and folly of man, so too would the seemingly innocent use of Gans lead to an immoral and otherwise corrupt descent from its intended uses. Because just three years later, in 2017, a Reddit user by the name Deepfakes used the same technology to upload porn with the participants' faces digitally replaced with the faces of Hollywood celebrities. These videos led to bans by Reddit, citing that it violated their policy against revenge porn and involuntary pornography. But the damage was done. Deep fakes were catapulted into the mainstream and the user who uploaded the initial videos had already created Fake App, a new software that allowed anybody with an extensive photo library of a person to easily create deep fakes themselves. Though the inception of deep fakes was through a few awful Reddit posts, it only scratches the surface. Because if you can fake porn, then you can probably fake something as easy as, I don't know, a political speech? That's what experts who study disinformation are wary of. They think that as this technology advances, it's only a matter of time before parties use deepfakes to manipulate elections and falsify information to the masses, you know, actual fake news. And those fears aren't unwarranted. 
deep fake videos of Donald Trump have circulated all over the internet. And even though they look a little choppy and the quality is questionable, they're still fooling people. For example, a political party in Belgium created a deep fake of Donald Dear Trump criticizing the country about their climate policy. And it deal. actually tricked a lot of As Belgian you know. people. I had the balls to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement, and so should you. It was later revealed that it was a fake stunt in an effort to get people to sign a petition for more action against climate change. A very, very unorthodox way to get people to sign a petition for the greater good. But what if this political party had malicious intent? In an effort to combat this potential menace, the U.S. Defense Department sponsored a team at the State University of New York at Albany to study deepfakes. The team was tasked to identify any signs in these videos that gave them away. And after running a bunch of different forensic tests, they found the answer right under their noses. Or more specifically, their eyes. By combining two neural networks together to track eye movements, they found that in almost every deepfake, the eyes never blinked. In the instances where the deepfakes did blink, it didn't look very natural either. This is all due to the fact that when people feed the GAN images of a subject, they seldom choose images of their subject with their eyes closed. And along with no blinking, researchers also observe that sometimes head movements and eye color can also be off. So if you're questioning whether or not the video you're watching is a deep fake, look at the eyes. Though in theory, a good enough video editor could not probably work around this and make blinking look normal if they really tried it. Let's just hope that people creating deep fakes aren't highly skilled in After Effects or Photoshop. Even with visual cues, audio is a whole other can of worms. Programs like Deep Audio can take less than four seconds of someone speaking, less than four seconds, and use an algorithm to recreate their voice. It uses the same kind of machine learning to produce a digital recreation of speech. And some deep fakes are leaps and bounds ahead of others. A team at the University of Washington was able to program a neural network to watch hours of President Obama's addresses and recreate a high quality video of him speaking with his lips accurately synced to what he was saying. We are and we will keep doing everything in our power to stop these kinds of attacks. This process wasn't as simple as running photos through a GAN, but the network watched how Obama was moving his mouth as the sounds he made came out and understood it enough to recreate it using what's called 3D pose matching to make a fake Obama speaking like the real thing. Essentially, this program watched so much to Obama that all it needed was his voice to create a video. Now, I've watched plenty of Obama speeches but I don't have enough information to draw him, let alone recreate an entire video. It's terrifying. So deep fakes are gonna get good. They're gonna get really good. But if you're worried, fear not. The US Department of Defense is working diligently to sponsor more studies in order to debunk deep fakes. Even Facebook is looking into digital tools that can spot deep fakes on its website. There are also measures to ensure videos are authentic, like digital watermarks on content that could be tracked and logged using blockchain. And silver lining, because Lord knows we need one. There is a bit of fun to be had with deepfakes. Hey, remember Benjamin? The creators of Sunspring made another film, Zone Out, where the same actors were filmed making different expressions and delivering different lines so their faces could be superimposed into performances in films within the public domain. So basically what I said is, Ross, Ross, what, what we're gonna do is, Benjamin's gonna write the screenplay, but then Benjamin is going to make selections from um, out of copyright movies uh, using another system which, which identifies objects in those out-of-copyright movies that are in the screenplay. Pull those selections from the out-of-copyright movies and then we're going to train a bunch of deep fakes input on the existing actors from Sunspring and then Benjamin is going to put their faces into the footage from the old out-of-copyright movies, put them all together in the order implied by the screenplay, then write a score and that means that Benjamin will have written, directed, performed and scored the film. I'm going to have to stay here. I think I'd like to talk to you about the first problem. While it's choppy, it's decidedly a way better use of deepfakes than, you know, trying to start a political coup. Will deepfakes replace actors? Probably not. Though I do foresee a future in which we're bringing dead actors back to life for movies or the occasional Super Bowl commercial. Will deepfakes incite political turmoil? Hopefully not. With experts more aware than ever of the threat of this technology, there's still time to figure out preventative measures. And in the case that something like this were to happen, there are ways to trace the videos back to whoever fabricated them. For now, 
If you're scared, like me, just make sure nobody has access to thousands of photos of you, you know, to be safe. I mean, who's to say I wasn't a deep fake this whole time? Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Contextual. If you liked this episode, please make sure to leave a comment below and tell us what you liked about it. And if you have ideas for new episodes for next season, let us know in the comments as well. We have new episodes coming out every Thursday, so if you want to keep track of all the new episodes coming out, please like and subscribe to our page. And as always, have a great day.